Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Tangle YouTube channel. Today's debate is on President Joe Biden, who announced his plans to run again in 2024 last week. Given that, we're going to do a review of how his presidency has gone so far. As always, we'll have some views from the left and the right, and then my take. Today, as promised, I'm also going to be responding to some reader feedback from our last video. But first, the story. President Biden officially announced his intention to run for president in 2024 last week. He launched his campaign with a new video. When I ran for president four years ago, I said we're in a battle for the soul of America, and we still are. This is not a time to be complacent. That's why I'm running for re-election. In some ways, Biden's decision to run is unsurprising. Just six of the last 45 presidents have chose not to run for re-election, and two of the most recent, Harry Truman and Lyndon Johnson, had pretty extenuating circumstances of unpopular wars that basically drove them out. On the other hand, a second Biden term would be historic in many ways. At 80 years old, he's already the oldest president in U.S. history, and he would be 86 at the end of a potential second term in 2028. If he ends up running against Trump, which seems like the most likely scenario right now, it'd be the first time the same nominees faced each other in back-to-back -back elections since Dwight D. Eisenhower and Aldi Stevenson in 1956. It would also be the first time a president was challenged by his predecessor since 1912, that's the same year that the Titanic sang. So given this, a lot of people are asking, should Biden run at all? We actually covered that in a recent Tangle newsletter, and there is a link to it in today's video description. But today, we're gonna explore a different question, not whether he should run, but just how is the Biden presidency going so far? How would we grade it? What are the big wins and the big losses? As always, we're gonna share some reviews from the right and the left, and then I'll offer my take. First up, let's start with what the right is saying. The right has mostly argued that Biden's presidency has been a failure, focusing on some chaotic incidents and his executive overreach. Many on the right point to the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, high inflation, and the border crisis as the biggest knocks against his presidency. National Review's editors argue that Biden has just failed as our commander-in-chief. Our withdrawal from Afghanistan was a disaster. It ultimately handed the country to the Taliban and ended with a suicide bombing that killed 170 Afghans, 13 Americans, and was an embarrassment to the United States on top of everything else. Biden's posture with Russia, including that NATO might tolerate a minor incursion in Ukraine, led to Vladimir Putin actually invading. Not only that, but the China-Russia-Iran axis continues to strengthen while Biden has alienated allies like Saudi Arabia. So Afghanistan, Russia, China, Iran, these countries all represent failures in the eyes of many on the right. Meanwhile, on domestic issues, there's plenty to be upset about too. Michael Goodwin argued in the New York Post that Biden is responsible for inflation, which has been one of the single biggest issues of his presidency. While Biden has tried to blame inflation on the Putin price hike and the pandemic, Goodwin points to The Economist, who have said nearly $2 trillion of government spending in Biden's first year was the cause of a major surge of consumer demand and prices. Biden's posture toward the oil industry, meanwhile, led to historic highs in gas prices. And the cherry on top? We've had a slew of bank failures, we've had some mediocre performing stock markets, and wages aren't rising fast enough to keep up with inflation. Many on the right also argue that Biden has acted lawlessly, exercising executive power and overreach in a way that has damaged the country. On student loans especially, this talking point has gained salience. Here's Andrew Clavin and how he talked about it. Conservatives are always acting shocked that when 
uh, leftists who are materialism, materialists, materialism is inherent in leftism, when they start offering people stuff, free money, or when they start saying things like, oh, we'll only tax people who make over $400,000. And everybody goes, yeah, over four, you know, they're playing to our worst self. And so, of course, they're going to succeed more easily because that is the way the world works. The world is driven by sin, what Christians call sin. And nobody likes to talk about that. We like to talk about other, we try to put it in other kind of terms, but that is exactly what it is. It wasn't just student loans either. He used executive power to create an eviction moratorium during COVID and to implement a national vaccine mandate. Speaking of COVID, things didn't get much better under Biden there either, despite advanced medicine and research. Just look at the deaths during the Trump presidency compared to those during the Biden presidency. Of course, one of the biggest failures of the Biden presidency has been on immigration. In some of Biden's first acts as president, he undid Trump-era immigration policies under the guise of them being inhumane, cruel, or ineffective. Sometimes that might have been true, but the result of undoing those policies actually proves some of their effectiveness. At least that's the case the right is making. Illegal immigration skyrocketed. As RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel put it, 6.3 million illegal immigrants have crossed the border since he took office, and those are just the ones we know about. On top of all this, many conservatives feel like Biden has been on the wrong side of the biggest culture war issues in the US, whether it's trans women in sports or race and gender ideology being taught in schools. So that is basically what the right is arguing when they talk about why Biden's presidency has been a failure. But what about the case for Biden? Here's what the left is saying. First up, I want to be clear that there are plenty of mixed feelings about Biden running again in 2024, even on the left. Polling actually shows a majority of Democratic voters want to see him step aside, though that is mostly tied to his age and not necessarily what he's done as president. But that doesn't mean most Democrats are upset about his presidency. The case for Biden goes a little something like this. First, he's had a number of legislative wins on Democratic priorities, more than pundits of any stripe really expected. He started his presidency by passing the American Rescue Plan, a $1.9 trillion piece of legislation that kept the economy afloat. The package may have been larger than expected and maybe even contributed to inflation, but that was a better mistake than going too small. It kept businesses alive, families from falling into poverty, and prevented any economic calamity. And the results bear that out. Unemployment today is the lowest it's been since 1969. The economy grew at 2.7% last year. Inflation, while elevated, is starting to come down and wages are continuing to rise, especially for lower income workers. The cherry on top? Child poverty also hit a record low when Biden expanded the child tax credit, which while not being a permanent policy, Biden is still fighting for. He also passed a bipartisan infrastructure bill and a climate and healthcare bill. His investment in the clean energy was called the world's most important climate action by the International Energy Agency. And he teamed up with Republicans to pass the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which enhanced background checks for guns, closed the quote unquote boyfriend loophole, and provided money for mental health issues. He managed to pass an expansion of Medicare that has helped lower drug costs. He signed the PAC Act to address veteran health care and those exposed to burn pits and he made a massive investment in domestic semiconductor manufacturing. On foreign policy, many Democrats would actually defend his record. Yes, the Afghanistan withdrawal was chaotic, but he ended the war, which other presidents promised to do but never really did. He has also maneuvered NATO deftly against Ukraine, making Putin's war costly and mostly ineffective, all without putting any US troops on the ground or seeing the war expand into Europe more broadly. NATO has been strengthened under his leadership, unifying the West against authoritarian regimes like China and Russia. Many on the left also argue that it's clear Biden is doing what Americans want. Despite his approval ratings, which are in the low 40s, Democrats had a strong midterm showing and continue to win state and local elections across the United States. Many Democrats contend that this is proof of their national strength and proof of Biden's support. There are some big intractable issues like immigration, of course, but many on the left would make the case that it's impossible to solve those problems without Republicans coming to the table on policy. If anything, the biggest criticism from the left on Biden is that he hasn't been progressive enough. Some commentators make the case that he has abandoned the voting rights bill, free community college, universal pre-K, and the child tax credit, 
all because he was too scared to abolish the filibuster. So that's the left's case. Low unemployment, a growing economy, lots of impactful legislation, gun control, standing up to Putin, and if anything, a desire to push more progressive priorities. Which brings us to my take. Just a reminder that my take is just that. It's my take. If you love it, if you hate it, if you have something you want to say, just leave a comment on the video and I'll try and reply there or I'll try and address it in a future video. But please just keep an open mind. It's my opinion. You can take it or leave it. So first, let me be clear that grading or reviewing a presidency is very difficult because one thing a president does might seem great to some people, but terrible to others. For instance, if I were grading Biden on gun control and I was supportive of more restrictions on guns, I might give him a B for passing a bipartisan gun control bill that was more extensive than anything we've really seen in a while. But if I did not want more gun control, then I might give him a D for that very same piece of legislation. So rather than grading that way, what I like to do is talk about what the president promised versus what he's actually done. There is a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to try and tackle each of these fairly quickly, but just go through the things I think are really important. So Biden promised to get COVID under control quickly. That was one of the biggest promises of his campaign. I think today you could argue that mission is largely accomplished. COVID is basically gone from our lives and restrictions have been dropped, though there are obviously still cases. We're not really wearing masks everywhere. We're not living under COVID restrictions. But it's a very mixed bag. Hundreds of thousands of people died from COVID on Biden's watch, and he once said that was disqualifying for a president. 220,000 Americans dead. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear this. Anyone who's responsible for not taking control, in fact, not saying I'm, I take no responsibility initially, anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. Of course, Biden did a great job distributing and ushering in more vaccinations, but on the whole, I think it's a pretty mixed bag, maybe a C or C plus for his overall COVID response. Biden also promised more bipartisan legislation to address the economy. On this, he probably gets an A. When Biden came into office, nobody really expected him to get as much done as he's gotten done. Whether you think it's good or bad stuff, the truth is it has been a pretty active presidency and he has passed a lot of legislation, including a good deal with Republican votes. So you have to give him a pretty good grade for that. A lot of those bills also address economic issues like trade, COVID, China, semiconductor manufacturing, a lot of issues that I think are very important to a lot of Americans. Biden also promised to address policing in some way. On this, he basically gets an F. There hasn't really been anything that's happened in the policing space under Biden's watch that's really significant, though I should note that I don't really think the federal government should be responsible for figuring out how state and localities should police, but he did promise it, so that is basically on him. He promised major investment in climate change. Uh, I think he passes that with pretty much flying colors. He passed one of the biggest climate change bills in US history. He said he was gonna improve Obamacare. Probably gets a B or B plus on that. There's been some pretty good changes. He said he was gonna increase VA access, which he actually did, though there are still a lot of questions about how the VA is functioning. I think that's something we'll have to check back in on in a couple of years. If you talk to any progressives, you'll hear that Biden has missed on quite a lot. He said he was going to codify Roe v. Wade, which he obviously hasn't done. He needs Republicans for that. He said he was going to decriminalize marijuana. He hasn't done that. He said he'd find universal pre-K. No, that didn't happen. He said he was going to forgive all student loans. He certainly tried, but he did it in a way that's probably going to be struck down by the Supreme Court. He talked about making college tuition free for many community colleges or two-year universities. That hasn't happened. And then there is the economy, which is obviously a huge mixed bag. Inflation is stubborn and persistent, and it's been a scourge for many people. Yet it's also a great time to get a job or ask for a raise. And we haven't really had the predicted recession many people said was coming. Given that there are rising interest rates, there's problems with inflation, but there's also this sort of upward trajectory of the unemployment rate going down and the economy growing, 
I think you have to give him somewhere in a C plus range, maybe a B minus on a good day, depending on how the inflation stuff shakes out. Hasn't been a total failure, but hasn't been a clear success either. I'm pretty supportive of legislation that helps mix up and add to our energy sources. So I'm a pretty big fan of some of the infrastructure stuff that's happening, some of the climate change stuff that's happening. I think all of that is relatively good and in the long term will probably be a good investment. But I have to say, we can't really grade that right now. I mean, again, Biden promised to do it and he did it. So I think he gets points. But I also think we're going to have to wait for a little while and see how that money gets invested, where it goes, how it's spent to really understand whether it was the smart thing to do. Of course, a promise that Biden made that is very relevant to someone doing my work is that he was going to unite the country. On this, I have to say Biden's basically utterly failed. I mean, we are maybe a little bit less toxic and polarized than we were two years ago, but not by much. Our politics still feels really divided and really toxic. And I think we are still far, far away from coming together. Certainly, a lot of conservatives will make the case that Biden has only made it worse by the way he talks about many Republicans and lies about the things that they might do, like, say, cutting Social Security. And I think they have a point in a lot of places. So I'm not really sure how much credence I give to Biden on uniting the country, but I certainly hope that's something that changes soon. All right, so we're about two years into Biden's presidency, a little bit more than two years into his presidency. We have a new Congress that just got sat recently. I think there's still a lot of stuff here that we're gonna have to wait and see how it plays out. But I will say this, I'm not the kind of person who likes to say generally whether I think a presidency is going well or a politician is doing well, because I really prefer to talk about specific issues. But I do think I'm comfortable saying that President Biden has been neither a fantastic great president, nor has he been a total calamity. We have to accept the fact that he's just had a mixed bag of a presidency. There are some things that have objectively gone bad, whether it's the Afghanistan withdrawal or inflation or the border, which I totally believe is in crisis right now. And there have also been things that have gone well. The economy is doing pretty well. COVID is much better now than it was two years ago. Biden has made some investments that I am supportive of when it comes to climate change or issues related to infrastructure. All those things I think are pretty good and balance some of the headline news that has been really negative about his presidency. So again, we're only about halfway in. I'm not quite ready to give him A's and F's and B's and D's as a president as a whole. But we will keep an eye on this. And when his presidency ends, I promise you we will do what we did for Trump in 2020, which is we did a full review of his presidency. We broke down all the promises he made, all the big promises he made, and whether he fulfilled them or not, and then talked a bit about how the legislation he implemented panned out. So keep your eyes out for that. We'll be back. For now, those are my sort of ambiguous grades about Biden's presidency. And at least you have a good idea about what people on the left and the right are thinking. I'm also curious what you think. So leave a comment, let us know. I'll be sure to check it out and try and reply either in the comment section or in our next video. Speaking of, I do want to get to a reader comment. Two weeks ago, somebody left a comment on one of our videos about the Republicans' parental rights bill, and this is what they said. When it comes to some of the points, was the child's view considered? Many times trans kids are scared of coming out to their parents as there is documented evidence of beatings or abandonment and even worse. In addition, the world is changing rapidly and our children should be given an education that provides them with the tools to enter the world and be productive. So I actually really like this comment because when we talked about this parental rights bill a couple weeks ago, I don't think we really gave any space to what the bill looked like from the children's perspective, from students' perspectives. And that is probably a mistake that not just I was making, but also many in the media were making. But I do think maybe we overlooked a thread of that story, which is, was this policy actually good for the kids, for the students? We talked a lot about what the parents were saying and how they were fighting and how the teachers felt. I think it was a mistake on our part not to flesh that out a little bit more, not to explore what a high schooler or a middle schooler might think about some of the rules that are being implemented in their schools right now. And I'm sure those views Views are just as mixed as they are among parents and teachers and Republicans and Democrats, but it was a good call out and it's something we'll keep in mind if we touch on that issue again. 
All right, everybody, that is it for today's video. As always, if you wanna support our work, please subscribe, like, share this video, spread the word about Tangle and what we're doing. And if you have some thoughts, feel free to leave a comment. We'll try and get back to them either in the comment section or in the video. We'll be back here same time next week. Peace. There's some laundry going right now. I really need my laundry done, so I'm hoping that it doesn't make a bunch of loud noises. It's probably gonna beep like at some point.